Hi, welcome to Wednesday. Uh, before we get started, I want to remind everybody that this Friday, the 9th, is the Law of Abundance. It is at 917 Eastern Standard Time. So you have after midnight on the 9th till 917 p.m. to write your checkout. This is a very easy one to do. Just remember to do the check in your appropriate time zone. Okie doke, the Zoom for the 9th is full, but we still have a couple spots for Zoom on the 19th. Today I'm going to talk about college, a portal in a college house. Um, in 1980, 81, I did work for a young couple named Rita and Jack. They had three kids, three boys. And actually, it was pretty cool because they were the same age as Ted and I, and we had the two girls, and they had the three boys. So it was sort of nice to see somebody my own age. Um, over the years, every time they moved or thought they had a problem in the house, they would call me up and I would either take care of it or it was fine. Uh, the oldest child, Paul, was a freshman in college and they called to see if his dorm room was clear so that they could put the seats up. And it was. The following year, Greg, their second one, was a freshman in the same college. And they called again to make sure that his dorm room was clear, and it was. When Paul was a junior and Greg a sophomore, they got a house off campus uh, with three other friends. And Rita called from the house to make sure it was okay uh, the day that they were moving them in. It was not. There was a couple of earthbound spirits there and a portal. It's crazy because before they were in there, there were five college girls that had rented the place. And the homeowners told Rita she would never rent to girls again. Partying, drinking, drugs, uncontrollable. So she had made up her mind that she was only going to let guys rent the house out for the college year. Rita assured her that her boys didn't do any of that. Two of the other guys that were going to be in the room with them were friends of her boys. And the fifth guy Rita did not know. Ted and I went to the college on a Saturday, and Rita and Jack met us at the house. Paul and Greg and the two buddies were there, but not the fifth one. This house was built in 1918, really old, big house. Uh, it was very well kept up. The owners did work and made it a five-bedroom house. Um, Eat kitchen, laundry room, living area, two bathrooms. The basement bedrooms were also very nice for such an old house. It was pretty obvious that they had put in uh, concrete and definitely fixed the, the basement up. Uh, when the new owners bought it, all the work was done. They didn't have to do anything. Uh, now, it's interesting because when I and Ted went, the boys had been in the house already for about two, two and a half weeks by the time we got down there. And, oh my gosh, the brothers were fighting terribly. The other two roommates, one hit was accusing the other one of taking money out of his wallet. The other one was apparently he, he wouldn't put away anything, left dishes all over. These guys got along just fine, except since they were in here. As a matter of fact, the one kid had actually called his mother and said, get me out of here, I can't live with these guys. Now, it's interesting. The one earthbound spirit was 20 years old, a guy. 
he had committed suicide on campus 15 years prior to this. And 20 years old, you do not want to be dead. So he had some of the, the, the trouble that was in the house for the last two and a half weeks he was doing. The other man, earthbound spirit that was in the house was about 65. And he was upset because he liked it better when the girls rented it. Uh, he had never married, but said he sure liked to look. He didn't break anything, but he was the one that liked to move stuff. He was fascinated with remotes and constantly clicking the TV on and off. He messed with their computers and they had been having a lot of computer problems in the two and a half weeks. However, both of them did cross into the light, so it was perfect. Now, there was a man there from the portal. The portal was in the wall, and that's where most portals are. And this guy was electrocuted on February 2nd in 1949. He was only 23 years old when they executed him. Um, his name was Harold, and he had killed and raped an eight-year-old little girl by the name of Sheila and he had killed her in the Cleveland area around Christmas or New Year's. And very little man, like five, five, three, five, four glasses. You know, he really looked very, very nerdy. I mean, that's the only way to describe him. Uh, he didn't know how long the portal had been there but he said that he had been coming in probably for the last three years anyway. And he also knew that other earthbound spirits from the portal were coming in when he was not there. Now let me explain a portal to you. A portal is an energy opening that earthbound spirits use to get in and out of a property. The portal is blown open by live people, not dead people. The portal is blown open by something that happened that was very negative in the area where the portal was blown open. The thing with a portal is this, only one earthbound spirit can come out at a time. They can only stay for a day and a half, two days at the most, then they have to pop back in the portal. That's why Harold said when he wasn't there, other people were using it. But you can come back. And these people that come out of a portal are not nice people. I mean, the two guys that walked in through the front door were a trouble, but not like these people are that come out of a portal. Like I said, this guy was a murderer, a rapist, and he was put to death by the state. It is not unusual to see people in a portal or out of a portal that had been executed in some prison somewhere in the United States. That's not unusual at all. And he was the one that was creating all the trouble between the boys. He really thought that if he could cause enough trouble that they would leave and he wanted the girls back there too. He didn't like that these owners were having girls, uh, boys in there. He wanted the girls. He did not know, again, how long the portal was there. He was blown open way before him. The house was built in 1918. That, it, it could have been blown open in 1920. Who knows? I would have no way of knowing that. And these people that come out of the the portal, they would have no way of knowing that. If there had been a spirit there that died in 1920 or 1925, maybe they would have known, and obviously it would have been the first owners, but from 1918 to 1980, 81, a lot of people have lived in that house. 
Now, even though Harold had been dead for over three years, he was still 23 years old. When you die, you don't cross over, you stay the same age. But I have to say, the way he acted, the way he talked, uh, he had a mentality of a 15 or 16 year old, very, very immature. He did not want to go to the light. He said he was having too much fun going to the colleges and he went back into the portal. He absolutely refused to go to the light. I cannot grab them. I cannot throw them in. They have to want to go. Um, Rita's sons carried a quince seed and we made sure the other three guys had one on them also. At the time, I did not have the Quincy charms. I would just get people loose Quincy's. And they would get creative. Uh, most of the guys would put them in their wallet. What I wanted them to do, even in 1980, they still had a college ID. And they usually had it with them or on them. So they taped the seed behind that so that they knew where it was. Uh, they had to have it on them so that nobody would follow them when they came, you know, into the other classes or anybody else's house. You have to understand, college campuses are full of earthbound spirits. Look at the, the, the energy from the students alone. Uh, they, they love it. They absolutely love it. And most of the people on a college, uh, college campus that are dead and earthbound are that age, somewhere between 17, 18, 21, 22, 23. And every now and then you get a creep about 35 that just likes to hang out in the girls' dorms. Um, since then, Rita and Jack's sons are married. They have great jobs, kids of their own, and as a matter of fact, I just made sure Peggy, Paul's oldest daughter, Paul's oldest daughter, that her room was clear in her dorm room in college. So I have seen these kids go from little kids to parents to having their own kids in college. Again, portals are very common now since so many people have uh, lost houses because of the economy. People are angry. If a house has had a murder in it, a suicide in it, uh, something like that, a nasty divorce, that would absolutely blow open a portal also. Uh, so a couple of, oh, the Harold did say that he was there the one time when the girls were there and that they were having, uh, they had a psychic there that was telling them all kinds of stuff. And he said that he almost blew open a portal. So you have to be very careful who you invite into the house. And I think, you know, I think that covers this. Just keep this in mind. If your kids are going to college, if they are on the first, second, or the third floor of a dorm, then usually Quincy just go over the doors that go out to the hallway. But if you, the kids are in, again, a dorm room on the first, second, or the third floor, they also need seats on their windows because college students, if they're on the first, second, or the third floor, use windows as doors. And so we have to protect them that way. Okie doke. Next week, um, I don't know. I haven't decided what we're going to talk about next week. But I wanted to get this out there, especially now that the college kids are home. And before they start getting ready to go back, actually next month, it's July. Okay, have a great week. And we will talk next Wednesday. Thanks.